Many people on the planet right now are learning to manifest a new type of relationship called a sacred partnership. But what exactly is a sacred partnership and how do you call this elevated relationship into your life? In this video, you'll learn the top 10 signs of a sacred partnership so you can better prepare to receive this special type of love in your life. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. This is Christina Lopes, the Heart Alchemist, here to help you open your heart, heal your past, and live with purpose. Just a quick reminder that we have a free supplemental workbook with all of our videos, and it has questions and prompts to help you go deeper on the content that you see in this video. Click on the link below to download that workbook after watching this video. Okay, on to the top 10 signs of a sacred partnership, all right? So, sign number one is unconditional love, okay? So, this one is sometimes hard to put into words because a lot of us living on the planet right now have never really experienced unconditional love. We've been templated as children to think that something is love that maybe it's not. And so for a lot of us, even the concept of unconditional love is a little bit difficult to grasp if we've never actually felt it. When it comes to sacred partnerships, the bond is of a deep, deep, unconditional love. Okay, now, this is a love that is very different from what we're regularly used to experiencing as love. Okay, so a lot of times when we're in relationship, there is a lot of immature energy. There's a lot of attachment that can mimic love. There's a lot of uh, trauma bonding, what's known as trauma bonding. And that's when we have childhood wounds and we basically end up being in relationship with two wounded inner childs kind of banging their heads against each other. And, and this is called trauma bonding. This is not the adult part of you bonding with your partner, but it's the child part of you bonding with the partner. And so this type of trauma bonding that we learned as children, this can actually play later on in our relationships. And we think we have this deep unconditional love for our partners. And in fact, it's the trauma bonding or attachment, okay? Another thing that that can mimic love is a uh, karmic energy. Okay. So a lot of times that we have soul contracts with certain souls that come down here that help us evolve what's known as karmic connections. And those connections have karmic energy or karmic cords attached to it. And so th they are so powerful that especially initially karmic cords can mimic love. And then later on, if we've ever been in these relationships later on, we start to feel that in fact, what we thought was love wasn't really, it was just the karmic connection bringing us together because we had some karma to clear or some lessons to learn. Okay, so the, this is not present in a sacred partnership. In sacred partnership, the love transcends all of this trauma bonding, karmic energy, attachment, and it goes into a very, very pure, pure and powerful love called unconditional love. A lot of times when it comes to actually using words to describe unconditional love, I wanna go deeper into this so that if you've never felt this before, you can start to kind of open yourself up to what this type of love means, okay? so. The best way that I have found to describe unconditional love is that unconditional love is a type of love where you wish for the other person's happiness and joy. Okay. You may be saying to me, well, obviously, you know, like, of course, if I'm in love, I wish for the other person's happiness and joy, but let's go into this. Okay. Because you may be surprised at how this isn't always true. Okay. So a lot of times when there's trauma, when there is attachment, when there's karmic bonding, when there's all of these kinds of things that aren't unconditional love, what ends up happening is we say we want the other person's happiness and joy, but what we really mean is that we, we only want the other person's happiness and joy if they're with me or they're with us. Okay. So I only want that person's happiness and joy. I can only hold that wish for their happiness. If they're with me, if they're not with me, I don't know, whatever I'm angry. I don't wish for their joy. I don't wish for their happiness. Okay. This is the difference between conditional love and unconditional love. In unconditional love, you deeply, deeply wish for the other person's happiness and joy, even if that happiness and joy is not with you. <laughs> that, is, that is the best way that I've ever found to describing unconditional love in a romantic sense, is that you just feel that profound wish for the other person's highest good, even if the highest good is not with you. 
Okay, so um, so this is another way of looking at it. And let me, let me actually um, let me actually repeat this again so that so that we have a different way of wording this, so the words kind of sink in. Okay, so in unconditional love, I wish for the other person's highest good. That's a, another way of saying it. I wish for the other person's highest good, even if their highest good is not with me. Okay, so that's another way of saying it. But as you can see, it's all pointing in the same direction, and that is that I wish for the highest and best good for that person in their lives, even if it doesn't include me. This doesn't happen when there's attachment or conditional love, because when there's attachment or conditional love, that per I only want that person's happiness if, if it's with me. If it's not with me, then I don't want to wish them any happiness or anything like that. Or we have difficulty seeing someone we love happy with someone else. If, if you find this difficulty, difficulty in you, then you're still not touching that unconditional love. Okay. So unconditional love, this is the pillar, pillar feeling. This is the pillar energy of any sacred partnership. Sign number two of a sacred partnership is that masks fall. Okay. Now the, the ding ding about this part here is how extremely rare this is. This is probably one of the most rare, uh, uh, things that exist in a regular relationship versus a sacred partnership. Okay. Masks fall means that you are 100% authentically you with that person. Okay. There are no masks. You're not pretending to be someone else. You are not hiding anything from your partner. This is so, so important. You are fully vulnerable, fully open, fully you. You present yourself 100% authentically in front of that person. Okay. Now, realize this is very, very rare, even in today's relationships. Very, very rare. We're always hiding even just a little bit from our partners. Okay. And a common example I give of this, um, to see if you've ever done this, I've definitely done this before uh, in relationships before. And it's when you go out to coffee or a drink with some friends and you know, you're having a hard time with your relationship and you go out and, and you go out with the friend and you just really need to kind of vent and talk and you talk about your partner with your friend, but then when you get home, you don't talk to your partner about what you talked about with your friend. So in other words, you are talking to someone else about your partner instead of talking to them face to face about it. So this means this is a person that's hiding something from the partner. So the masks aren't fully down. They're not being fully authentic. And so it's very rare that this actually happens in, in still in today's relationships, but in a sacred partnership, all of the masks fall, all of the armoring falls. And I present it energetically. It's almost like I present myself. I'm naked in front of that partner. Okay. In an energy sense, I drop all of my armoring. I drop all of my stories. I do not hide anything, the good and the ugly. Okay. So I don't hide anything from my partner. And that's the ha another hallmark sign of a sacred partnership is when both partners can do this. It can be scary to do that because we have the tendency to want to hide the things that we don't like about ourselves. But in a sacred partnership, all of that is seen. All of the masks are dropped. And, and it's this is a, another sign and a, an important sign. Without this, without any of the signs really, but without this one, you can't really have a sacred partnership if you're hiding something. Okay. So sign number two, all the masks fall off and as scary as it can be, you present yourself fully authentically with no masks, with no armoring in front of that person. Now, let me go in a little bit into why it's necessary for the masks to fall. Okay. And the reason is intimacy. Okay. So intimacy, you cannot have true intimacy with another partner if you're hiding something. Okay. Because what the hiding does is it creates a barrier and the more barriers you have between you and your partner, the more distance distant you are. And so intimacy is very difficult. When I drop all the masks and I drop all of the things that I'm hiding, when I show all of the things that I'm hiding, I come closer and closer and closer to my sacred partner. And that's where true intimacy is 
lies, okay? True intimacy is how close energetically can my heart get to theirs, okay? So there are no barriers. There's nothing here. There's nothing I'm hiding. The heart chakras and the energy centers come together. That is the hallmark of true intimacy. And if I don't drop my masks, I can't really have intimacy. So I'm always presenting barriers to intimacy if I'm trying to hide something, okay? So this is the reason why the masks need to fall. Until they fall, you're going to be far away from your partner energetically and true intimacy cannot exist in this energetic distance. So here's a way to solidify this energy a little bit so we can start opening up to this sign. And I'm going to use a mantra and affirmation that you could write down and remember. Okay. So in a sacred partnership, what they see is who I am. Okay. There's your affirmation. So what your partner is seeing is exactly who you are, not a pretend you, not a masked you, not a you that's hiding. It's all of you. They are seeing all of you. And that's when the masks totally fall. And, and this sign is present in your sacred partnership. Sign number three is personal sovereignty. Okay. So in a sacred partnership, sometimes people can mistake in a sacred partnership as being uh, codependent. Okay. So in a sacred partnership, codependency doesn't exist. The two partners stand, they are sovereign, sovereign beings that stand on their own two feet. They are each whole people. They're sovereign whole people. And this is, this is usually not what's present on the planet. There's a lot of codependency currently in relationships and codependency is really an, an attachment type of energy where the other person loses boundaries. Both partners don't have boundaries and then they mesh themselves, they lose themselves in the connection. That doesn't happen in a sacred partnership. In a sacred partnership, both partners are fully sovereign beings that are standing on their own two feet. And when they come together, they stay fully sovereign beings. Okay. Now there's a common saying that we have still on the planet today that kind of illustrates how this sign hasn't been present in relationships before. And it's the common saying where people say, oh, you know, when they're introducing, uh, when they're introducing the partner, they say, oh, this is my other half. If you've ever heard anyone say that, okay, this is my other half. What does that mean? That means that I'm half of one. And in sacred partnership, that does not happen. In sacred partnership, you are one and the other person is one. You are whole and the other person is whole. And you come together as fully whole individuals. Okay. So in sacred partnership, although this connection is so intimate, so close and so merged on many senses, the personal sovereignty is never lost. And the two people stand as whole adult, mature beings that come together and complement each other. They don't lose themselves in each other. Sign number four is is interdependence. Okay. Now I'm bringing this sign directly after the, the sign about personal sovereignty, because it's a fine balance that the two partners are going to be playing in this type of connection. Interdependence means that two sovereign people come together and they are not codependent. They don't lose themselves in the connection, but at the same time, they also depend on each other and they depend on the relationship itself. Okay. This is called interdependence and this is very, very healthy. But again, notice the difference in interdependence. I depend on my partner. They depend on me. We each depend on the relationship, but there's no codependency. There's not a loss of boundaries. There's not a loss of self. I don't become enmeshed in the other partner, giving me a sense of self-worth because I have my own self, a sense of self-worth. And so there's, there's this interdependence that's very important and sacred partners are really good at balancing the personal sovereignty with interdependence. Okay. But I want to leave a little side note here. Okay. I want to leave a little side note, ding, ding. All right. Side note is that it's important for us to understand that personal sovereignty and interdependence that we have a lot of times gone to the extreme. Okay. And, and a lot of people are in that energy right now. So I want to leave this as a side note here so that we can start to correct the energy. So we went from being totally total codependent relationships, usually traditional relationships 
relationships where if it was a heterosexual relationship, the woman was at home having children and the man was the, the breadwinner. And so she was dependent on him financially and he was dependent on her to raise children. And so there was this codependency kind of energy in relationships where one person could not survive without the other. Okay. So we went from that type of relationship and then we swung all the way into the opposite extreme. And that's usually how we evolve. There's no judgment there. That's usually how we evolve. And the opposite uh, swing and the opposite extreme that we've gone into and still exists a lot on relationships uh, now is that we then went into full, this is especially true for, for women, full, full, full and complete independence to a point where we started to isolate ourselves, okay? That's, that ended up being that we, we ended up saying, you know, I'm totally self-sufficient. I don't need a partner. I can do this all on my own. And what we ended up doing was we ended up isolating ourselves and going into exaggerated states of individualism, okay? If you're in that type of, of isolation where you're like, I don't need a partner for anything, yeah, that could be true that you don't need a partner to sustain yourself financially or anything like that, but interdependence is when you rely on, on the other person and the other person relies on you, okay? And so we have to correct that energy where we move out of a state of being kind of a solo island, so we're like, we're a one-person island, and we actually come into the understanding that interdependence is necessary in a sacred connection, because if I isolate myself also, if I go into exaggerated states of individualism, I won't be able to come into sacred partnership because I'm just me. I'm actually, I'm actually armoring myself. I'm not letting the other person in. I'm not letting myself rely on the other person and being able to rely on the other person and rely on the relationship. This is independent. This is interdependence. This is a very, very healthy sign of a sacred connection. Okay. So we have to make sure that we're not going into extremes. All right. Because this interdependence is very, very important when it comes to sacred partnerships. Now, another little side note that I want to leave here, you know, ding, ding. Another side note is we have to clear the energy between interdependence and codependency. Okay. So interdependence is not codependency. Okay. And let's clear this energy a little bit because sometimes people get this confused. Okay. Codependency is when I do not have a strong sense of self-worth or self-esteem or self-confidence, and I end up using the partner as a way to bolster my own sense of self-worth. This is why I lose myself in the connection, because without that partner, I don't have a sense of self. And so people who are codependent, they don't have good boundaries. They don't know where they end and the other person starts. They just enmesh their entire sense of self-worth in the other person. This is codependency. This is very, very toxic and it cannot be present in a sacred partnership. Interdependence is very different. In interdependence, I am a whole sovereign being. I don't need the other person in order to, to derive a sense of self-worth. I feel worthy. I feel strong in my self, sense of self-worth and self-confidence. And so does the partner. So when we come together, we still have a very strong sense of personal sovereignty. We know when we need our own individual time. We know how to, how to set uh, healthy boundaries. We do not lose ourselves in the connection. We rely on the partner and we rely on the connection and vice versa, but we're never losing ourselves into this kind of, um, into this kind of codependency type of energy. Okay. So you see the difference, very, very different terms, interdependence, not codependency and interdependence is extremely important sign when it comes to sacred partnerships. Sign number five is a mutual drive for evolution. Okay. So sacred partners are very different from regular relationships in the sense that they actually use the connection as a way to evolve. They know that their connection is not just a connection based on, on security or on being safe. They know that the connection is actually loving at the same time, but challenging at the same time, because they know they are both driven to evolve within the connection. And so sacred partnerships have this mutual 
mutual drive for evolution. They're not afraid of breakdowns in the connection because they know that breakdowns take them deeper and uh, they, they go through breakthroughs when they go through breakdowns. They're not afraid of going deeper and deeper and deeper into connection because they know that their relationship isn't just a regular relationship. It's a connection that's also meant to, to accelerate their evolution. All right. So this is this, this, um, this drive in sacred partners is very, very common in sacred partners doesn't really exist in regular relationships. So a lot of times I, I receive messages from people who, who say that they are in a relationship, they had a spiritual awakening and they're in a relationship and the partner doesn't really want to evolve. So the partner has a different idea of what a relationship looks like. So the partner would be perfectly content just sitting on the couch, holding hands and watching TV and just cuddling. And that's their sense of a relationship. And there's nothing wrong with that. But then the other person who's been activated into this kind of sacred partnership templating, that's not enough for them. And they already know that's not enough for them. And so this is a really common example of what happens when a person has a sacred partnership templating, they're made for that type of connection, and one that's not. The sacred partnership, the person that's templated with sacred partnership is always looking for more, for deeper, for deeper connection, because they know inherently that their souls want that type of connection for the evolution and the stretching of the soul's evolution. And so they're not going to be very content in a regular relationship. It'll become boring to them. Okay. So this is an important distinction to see whether you have that sacred partnership templating within you. So at the end of the day, sacred partners are a sacred partnership in a sacred partnership. Partners are both committed to grow and deepen the connection. Okay. So they are committed to growth and deepening the connection each and every day more and more and more. Okay. And they know that they're going to, they know they're going to have challenges between each other as they're doing that, but they don't shy away from it. They're not afraid to go into it. Or sometimes they are afraid to go into the challenges, but they go anyways, okay? Because that drive for mutual evolution is very present in their systems. Sign number six is pure mirroring. Okay, so I put this one right after the one that I was just talking about, sign number five, on purpose. Because one of the ways in which sacred partners evolve their mutual evolution, there's it's it, there's a little quirk that makes this mutual evolution occur, um, sometimes in a challenging way, sometimes in an accelerated way. And that is this pure mirroring. Okay, so what does this mean? Sacred partners, uh, this is a very, very strong soul connection. And sacred partners come from the same soul pot. Okay, so you can think about souls as being born and in incarnating in groups or clusters. Okay. You can call it a soul pod. And within a soul pod, there's a group of souls and each soul pod, the group of souls that is in each soul pod, they have very similar energy DNA. So their energetic DNA or blueprint is very, very similar to each other. So when these souls then come out of their pod and incarnate on earth and they find each other down here, if they have the contract of coming into sacred partnership, when they come to, into contact, they mirror each other because they are so similar energetically. Their souls are so similar energetically that they end up providing a very accurate mirror of each other. Now, you can see how this causes evolution, right? Because when I look in the mirror, I become conscious a lot faster than if I don't have mirrors. And so the mirroring is wonderful for evolution, but it can also be extremely challenging if you don't know how to use mirroring, if you don't have the skills to, to work through mirroring uh, instances. Because if I'm a pure mirror and the other soul is, a, if the other soul is a pure mirror of me and I'm a pure mirror of the partner, then that means that I'm going to mirror everything. I'm going to mirror the beautiful things about me and I'm also going to mirror the ugly things about me that I've been trying to hide. I can't hide them in a, in a sacred partnership because the other partner is going to be mirroring constantly. And so a, a lot of times this is one of the most challenging aspects of sacred partnership is that they have to learn how to work with the mirroring because one of the most common things that happens when sacred partners, especially when they're, first, they're more immature and they're first starting out and they don't know how to work with mirroring, one of the first things they'll do is when they mirror each other, instead of having the consciousness that that other person is mirroring something in me and I'm triggered by my own reflection, they'll usually start to point fingers at the partner. It's your fault. You made me feel this way. You, 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 because they're not realizing that the partner is mirroring something about themselves that they need to heal. 
But once the sacred partners become more mature and learn how to work with mirroring, it is a wonderful, wonderful way to evolve um, within this sacred connection. Sign number seven of a sacred partnership is truth. Okay, so in a sacred partnership, and one of the reasons why I put this at right after the mirroring is because in one way or another, it's really impossible not to stand in truth uh, with a sacred partnership because you're, you're mirroring each other so closely that if you're not telling the truth, your partner will mirror that back to you and there will start to, be, to have a lot of resistance and chaos within the connection because the connection will actually energetically repel any kind of lies, any lack of truth. So when you're in a sacred connection, you must tell the truth, okay? Another way of saying this is that you must stand in your integrity, okay? If you are out of integrity, then that's going to start to mess with the energetics of the connection. Your partner's going to mirror it back to you, and you're going to mirror it back to them. So truth is absolutely key in a sacred partnership. You must always tell the truth. Lies will not be very permitted in this connection because it's going to real, the connection will start to break down the moment that you stop telling the truth, okay? So you must stand in your integrity. And this is a little scary sometimes because it goes back to, again, that, that idea that I must share who I am. That's really another form of saying standing in truth is my masks must fall down and I must share who I am. I must share my truth, what I feel, my desires, what, I, what is in my highest good. I have to communicate to, that to the partner because in one way or another, I'm going to have to end up communicating my truth because if I don't, if I lie, the mirroring will start to occur and it's going to start to mess with the energetics and then the connection is going to break down. Okay. So remember this right off the bat, you must always communicate your truth. If you want to be in a sacred partnership, sign number eight is open and honest communication. So this kind of goes hand in hand with sharing your truth, but here we get a little bit more technical. So when you are in a sacred partnership, you're not afraid of communicating, but the communication is open and honest. And there's an aspect of communication that we, we frequently forget. A lot of times when we're talking about communication, we think that it's just saying what we want to say, okay? That communication is just talking. But communication isn't just talking. Communication is also receiving the other person's truth. So there's a really important skill that falls into this sign that sacred partners must always learn. And that's the role of the art of active listening. Okay. So when my part, it means that when my partner's talking, I'm not shut down. I'm actually open and inquisitive and wanting to hear what they have to say, wanting to hear their perspective. I'm not shut down. I'm not in resistant. I'm not talking back to them. I'm not interrupting them when they're talking. I just sit there and I actively open myself up to receive my partner's truth and they do the same for me. But the communication is fluid, it's open, it's not aggressive. So you're not trying to wound your partner with your words. You're very careful the way you speak. And so the communication is open, it's honest, but it's not violent in any way. Okay. And you're very good at listening, or at least you're learning how to become an active listener so that you can not only give your truth and share your truth, but also receive. Okay. So this type of open communication of honesty, of being a really good listener, this is very different from how we usually have relationships where, you know, we get into an argument and one person's screaming over the other and the other person's not listening to the other. That's how we've usually had arguments down here in regular relationships. But when you go into the sacred partnership plane, field. Now it requires more maturity and a way for you to develop this throat chakra so that you are giving and receiving communication without wounding the other person. Sign number nine of a sacred partnership is what's known as the third energy. This is, this is one of my favorite signs. I love talking about this one because it's not as commonly known. So the third energy, what this is now we go into more woo woo spirituality, more energy stuff that I love. Okay. So the third energy is actually an independent energy field that is formed when two sacred partners come together. It's almost, you can think of it like a child. <laughs> it's the first child that sacred partners, even if they want to have children later on, when they first come together, it's the first child. And for, for some couples, the only child that they have is this third energy. You can, you can think of it as a child. 
So what the third energy is, it is the, the two, when the two partners come together, because this connection is so intimate, because it's so close, because I have no barriers and I drop all my masks down and I tell the truth and I share my truth and I become vulnerable and I go into intimacy, that means that the two partners come very, very close energetically to a point where their energy fields start to merge. They dock onto each other, okay? Their chakras dock onto each other. Their auras start to merge, and it's because of the closeness that they have energetically as they're coming together. Well, in this merging, in this energy merging, there's a third energy that's formed, okay? And this third energy, it is an independent energy field, independent of the two individuals. That's what's cool about the third energy is that it functions as its own energy system. It's amazing, okay? And the third energy is so powerful that it starts to magnetize. It's a very magnetic type of energy field. And this is why oftentimes when you meet sacred partners, you'll notice that they are very good at manifesting. And it's actually this third energy that's helping them manifest because the third energy is so powerful, so magnetic that it actually goes out ahead of the sacred partners and it starts to, to um, magnetize uh, things that, that are in the highest good of the sacred partners. Okay, So this third energy is present in all sacred partnerships. It's very, very powerful. It's very, very beautiful. And it's actually really important in the mission, that, in the combined mission that those two sacred partners have in this lifetime. Speaking of a combined mission that I was just talking about, that's actually sign number two. 10 of a sacred partnership is a sense of combined mission. Okay. So when sacred partners come together, as soon as that third energy is born, that third energy is this independent energy, but it also works very closely with the two partners and it helps them manifest their combined mission. So when you think about uh, sacred partnerships, really what's going on is there are three missions actually in a sacred partnership. Okay. There's the mission of, you know, partner A, there's the individual mission of partner B, and then there's the combined mission of the two of them together, of the partnership together. This combined mission is really, really important. And one of the reasons why the two souls want to come together in a specific lifetime. All right. So it's very often actually for you to see sacred partners actually working together. So a lot of times sacred partners will leave their jobs when they meet each other and they're actually open a business themselves or they're, they'll start a nonprofit organization together. They will actually combine their missions, their interests, their passions, and they'll actually work together in an actual physical sense. For other sacred partners, they don't work together, but then they work together to anchor relationship templates. So maybe, you know, in their, um, maybe in their off time or when they, and on weekends or that one of their hobbies is to give talks about how to have evolved relationships. So they're actually helping to anchor the new relationship templates on the planet that's very different from the old relationship templates. And so that's a combined mission too, okay? So regardless of what the mission is, sacred partners have a combined mission and they both know they do. <laughs> so they come into the relationship or even, even before the relationship, a lot of times as sacred partners are coming close, even if they don't have an actual relationship yet, they're already starting to sense the combined mission coming in. They start to sense that they have very similar interests, very similar passions, and then they start to think, oh, wow, those passions can be combined to create something that's in their energy already, even before they come into relationship a lot of times, okay? So this combined sense of mission is really, really important, and this is the 10th and last sign of a sacred partnership. Speaking of all this energy stuff, the third energy, I talked about, you know, auras and electromagnetic fields. If you actually want to go deeper, if you had no idea what I just talked about, about in terms of energy chakras, auras, all of this, what an electromagnetic field is. I shot a whole video about the top features of your energy system, and that's going to be a great way. If you want to go deeper into that video, it'll help you understand sacred partnerships better and prepare for them better. I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below so you can watch after this one. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know in the comments below. Are you currently in a sacred partnership or are you wanting to call one in? I want to hear all about it below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can download my popular free guided meditations. And don't forget this video here on the energy system. That'll be great for you to continue viewing. That's it for me, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.